The spectrum of restaurateurs it covers the gamut. The, the rich retired dentist, the, you know, the chef who wanted his, his or her own place, the immigrant families who have experience in this business. However, one thing you can be sure of, you can still do everything right, everything right, and still fail. The restaurant business is a very tough business. The real estate loan is tremendously expensive. So if you don't start getting a return on your money quickly, uh, you're not gonna be able to last. If you have six months to a year, and then you're probably gone. Well, the odds didn't scare Donatella Arpea, who already knew a thing or two about the biz. Both my parents were born in Italy, and, and my father came here when he was 19 years old. And when he was 26, he opened up his first restaurant right in Long Island. And my crib was right near the dishwashing station. After a brief stab at a law career, Donatella decided to follow in her dad's footsteps. The eight months that I practiced, I was not happy. And I lived right above my brother's restaurant. And one night, he was, he was shorthanded. And I just started hostessing. And I was like, oh my god, I'm so happy doing this. And I started looking for a location the next day. A few months later, Donatella signed the lease on her first restaurant, Bellini. It soon won multiple awards and a rep as one of the top Italian eateries in New York. I was just so driven to make it work because everyone was telling me, especially my father, like, you're crazy, don't do it. So that only fueled me even more. Her passion paid off. Called the Duchess of Dining by New York Moves and Martha's New Competition by the New York Post in November 2004, Arpea became a star in America's fiercest culinary marketplace. Uh, you know what they say, if you make it in New York, you make it anywhere. I mean, you are competing not only with every great chef, you're competing with a very seasoned clientele. These are people that go out every night, and they are very picky. Luckily, she's garnered a huge following, and her success has inspired a partnership venture with celebrity chef David Burke. One of the things I learned from my first restaurant was that I wanted a chef partner, because the passion that I bring to the front, I wanted to have in the back. And I was a big fan of David's, and a mutual customer introduced us, and we ate a bowl of pasta and we became partners. In 2004, they opened the hugely successful David Burke and Donatella. That's the long name. We are saying we are here, we care, and we're watching everything. And you, you know when it's working or not. We also have the sashimi sea scops on the Himalayan rock salt. And that attention to detail extends to more than just the food. It's all about setting the mood of the restaurant that you want. There's texture, there's lighting, there's taste. And some of the chefs today, it's just what they're doing with food. They're taking it to, in directions no one's taken it before, and it's really exciting. In an industry based on shifting tastes, chefs are constantly challenged to come up with novel menus. Chefs are having to come up with their own spin. It's no longer the dish itself and how faithfully you reproduce it. It's really how the chef spins it. One chef who's come up with a really fresh spin is restaurateur Matthew Kenny. In 2004, along with chef partner Sarma Melngailis and owner Jeffrey Chodoro, he opened Pure Food and Wine, a raw vegan restaurant. This is a very specific area of cuisine, which is based upon, you know, not uh, breaking down the nutrients, and it's about not cooking food over 118 degrees.